Shalom and welcome everyone. Now for 2,000 years the Jewish people, the Israelites, those faithful to the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, followers of the Hebrew Scriptures alone, we have rejected the claims of Christianity throughout history and Messianic uh, Christianity as well and other forms of basically the Greek Scriptures, the claims made in the Greek Scriptures. Now, before I begin defining what is the Messiah, what is the Messianic Age, I want to start by saying we cannot have a legitimate conversation until we understand what is the Messiah, what is the Messianic Age, what will happen when the Messianic Age is here. Unless we understand what this all means, we cannot begin to have a discussion as to finding out who is or will be the Messiah. We can't understand if, for example, Yeshua or Jesus was the Messiah, or Shop Type Sfi, or Judah, the Prince, or many other people who tried to be the Messiah and failed in their mission. There were many, many people before and after Yeshua who tried to be the Messiah, tried to save all of Israel, and failed over and over and over throughout history. And still today, many false prophets claim to be the returning of Jesus. There are so many problems with all these claims. But again, let us begin. What is the Messiah? What is the Messianic Age? We have to begin there. And after we get done with that, then we can assess who is or isn't the Messiah. That being said, the word Mashiach... The word Mashiach means anointed. Oftentimes, Mashiach is translated or mistranslated as Messiah. Messiah. Messiah is actually an English form of saying Mashiach without getting your spittle on the camera or spittle on someone else. Mashiach. Messiah is an easy way of saying Mashiach, but Mashiach means anointed. Now, the fact of the matter is, in the Hebrew Scriptures, there were many Mashiachs. There were many anointed ones. In fact, there were many things that were anointed with oil. The anointing of someone, a Mashiach, was many things. It was the anointing of oil in the service of God. For example, kings were anointed, high priests were anointed, and so on and so forth and items used in the Holy of Holies were anointed. Let's take a look at the scriptures. I always say that we're going to begin with a diagram, okay? Imagine a big circle. Imagine there's a big poster in this video. There's a big circle A, okay? Big circle A. And within that big circle A is a small circle B. And on the side here, separate from that big circle, is a circle C. Now the big circle A, what it represents, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, is the passages that describe a transformed world, what the world will look like when the Mashiach is here, big circle A. The little circle B will represent the passages that speak about this descendant of David who will come during that time. Okay, so let's begin about the anointing of many different people and items. Okay, so for example, we see in Exodus chapter 30, verses 22 through 30, if you read it for yourselves, speaks, to, speaks about the sanctification of many items in the Holy of Holy. For example, in verse 25, it says, And you shall make for these a sacred anointing oil. With it you shall anoint the tent of meeting, and the Ark of the Covenant, and the table, and all its utensils, the lampstand, and its utensils, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering, with all its utensils, and the basin with its stand, you shall consecrate them so that they may be most holy. Now, there's an example of many things being anointed with oil. Okay, here we go. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. Then Samuel took the flask of oil and poured it on his head 
kissed him and said, Has not Yehoah anointed you a ruler over his inheritance? Again, in the servitude of Elohim, of God. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 6. He said to his men, Yehoah forbid that I should do this thing. This is when David saw King Saul. And he was his enemy, asleep. He could have slaughtered him. But he says these words, God forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord. Yehoah's anointed to raise my hand against him, for he is Yehoah's anointed. Couldn't do that. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16. You shall also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel, Meholah, as prophet in your place. Isaiah 45, verse 1. We see there, for thus says Yehoah to his anointed, to Cyrus. This is a continuation to Daniel chapter 9. One of the two anointed mentioned in Daniel 9, which is also another uh, problem in the Christian reading of Daniel 9. Psalms 105 verse 15. Do not touch my anointed ones, my Mashiach, my Mashiach. There are more than one anointed ones, or do my prophets any harm. Leviticus chapter 4 verse 3. If the anointed priest, Ha Mashiach, priest, shall sin so as to bring guilt on the people, let him offer for his sin which he has sinned. Again, Mashiach. There are many Mashiachs in the scriptures. That being said, there are many, many other passages, but it's just over and over again. I think that's enough for now. Let's go into Big Circle A. Remember I mentioned the Big Circle A? And I hope that you'll understand. Big Circle A. These are the hundreds of passages, just a handful of the hundreds of passages that speak about a transformed earth. The Messianic Age. Okay? What the world will look like during the Messianic Age. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 3. This is about, we're going to begin now with the ingathering of the lost tribes of Israel and the lost tribe of the, the members of Judah that were lost as well, joining righteous Judah, the suffering servant, those who continued in the covenant, because God says in the Torah that there would always be a righteous remnant, and there always has been throughout history. So here's the prophecies about the ingathering of all the lost ones of Israel with Judah coming together. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 3, then Yahweh your God will bring back your captivity and have mercy upon you. He will gather you in from all the peoples of which Yahweh your God has scattered you. Isaiah chapter 11 verses 11 through 12. It says it shall be on that day that Yahweh will once again show his hand to acquire the remnant of his people who have remained. He will raise a banner for the nations and assemble the castaways of Israel. Now we see in Isaiah chapter 43 verses 5 through 6. Fear not, for I am with you. From the east I will bring your offspring, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, Give them up. And to the south, Do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 18. In those days the house of Judah will walk with the house of Israel, and they will come together from the land of the north to the land that I have given as a possession to your fathers. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 3, For behold, days are coming, says Yehovah, when I will return the captivity of my people Israel to Judah. And Yehovah, and I will return them to the land that I gave their forefathers, and they will possess it. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 17, Therefore say, Thus says Yehovah Elohim, I will assemble you from the nations and gather you in from the lands where you have been scattered, and give you the land of Israel. We saw this happen in our lifetime. And still in gathering, it's happening as we speak. It's been happening for decades. We have brought back our brothers and sisters. God has brought back, for example, Ethiopian Jews. Soon to come, our African brothers and sisters will join us as well. The tribes are returning. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 13. I will remove them from the peoples and gather them from the lands and bring them to their soil. I will tend upon them the mountains of Israel, in the streams, and in all the land's habitants. 
Ezekiel 36, verse 24, I will take you from among the nations and gather you from all the lands, and I will bring you to your own soil. Jeremiah 32, verse 37, Behold, I shall gather them back from all the lands of which I dispersed them in my anger, my wrath, and in my great fury, and I shall return them to this place and cause them to dwell in security. This is in the Messianic Age. Now, I can go on and on. I had many, many pages of these, of these proof texts of each subject, but considering the time and your time, I condensed it for you. There are many, many passages. Study Tanakh. Rebuilding of the Holy Temple. This is another thing that will happen in the Messianic Age. This must take place. Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. It will happen in the end of days at Yehovah, the mountain of Yehovah, of the temple of Yehovah, will be firmly established as the head of the mountains, and it will be exalted above the hills. And all the nations, the righteous of the nations, shall stream to it. Many peoples will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yehovah, to the temple of Elohim, the God of Jacob, so he may teach us his ways. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah. This is in the Messianic age. The righteous of the nations shall come to Israel to learn the truth. This is what we are teaching today. And in the future, all the nations will see that the truth was always with the Jews, and they will come together, and we will all come together as brothers and sisters as one. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 7. All the flocks of Kedar will be gathered to you. The rams of Neboath will serve you, and they will be brought up with favor upon my altar, and I will glorify the house of my splendor, the temple. Ezekiel chapter 40 through 44, if you read it, chapters 40 through 44, describe vividly how the third and final temple will be built, inaugurated, what the Mashiach will do while the temple is standing, over and over and over. Isaiah 56 verses 6 through 7, And the, and the strangers who join themselves to Yehovah to minister to him, to love the name of Yehovah, to be his servants, these are you, those who are not Israelites, who want to join Israel. It says, you, you who love to minister to him, to love the name and to be his servants, all who keep the Shabbat, not to profane it, hold fast to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. This is the temple to come. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, black, white, brown, pink, whatever, everyone of the righteous people of the earth will join in. The wicked will be destroyed. The filth, the vermin of this earth will be destroyed. But the righteous will be here on earth with Israel. You're not going to be destroyed for what you don't know. Only pure wickedness will be destroyed in that time. Malachi chapter 3 verse 4. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to Yehovah as in days of old, as in former years. Zechariah chapter 14, verses 20 through 21. On that day there shall be inscribed on the bells of the horses, Holy to Yehovah. And the cooking pots in the house of Yehovah shall be as holy as the bowls in front of the altar. Again, describing the holy temple. Again, you can read more verses on that. It says there in verse 21 at the end, And there shall no longer be traitors in the house of Yehovah of hosts on that day. Next subject of the big Circle A is the observance of the Torah, earthwide observance of the Torah. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 8 and 10 says, You shall return and listen to the voice of Yehovah and perform all his commandments which I command you this day. This is all of Israel, all of Israel. When you listen to the voice of Yehovah your God and observe his commandments and his decree that are written in this book of the Torah, when you shall return to Yehovah your God with all your heart and all your soul. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 32, the new covenant. This means the messianic age. For this is the covenant that I will seal with the house of Israel after those days, says Yehovah. I will place my Torah within them and I will write it upon their heart and I will be their God for them. And they will be my people for me. And it says there for those who believe that the new covenant has to do with Jesus in the New Testament. It's not true. The new covenant says, In those days, no man shall have to teach each one his neighbor to know Yehovah, for they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. As we see in 
Isaiah chapter 11, the end of Isaiah chapter 11, it says, The knowledge of God will cover the earth as the waters covers the sea. What is that knowledge? It is the Torah. Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 19 through 20 states, I will give them an undivided heart. I will place a new spirit in them. I will remove the heart of stone and their flesh and give them a heart of flesh, so that they may walk in my decrees and observe my laws and fulfill them. Also, you could find this in Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26 through 27. The reign of peace is another, another vision of the Messianic age. Worldwide peace. We find that in, in Micah chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. In those days to come, the mountain of Yehovah's house, that's the temple, shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. People shall stream to it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yehovah again. The same message, just as in Isaiah chapter 2. To the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways. We may walk in his path, for out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of Yehovah from Jerusalem. Okay, Hosea chapter 2 verse 20 also states the same message of the reign of peace. For I will make a covenant of that day with the wild animals, even nature. It says he will abolish the weapons of war. And I will make them lie down in safety. Again, no more wars. Worldwide peace. Isaiah chapter 2 says they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Worldwide peace. Isaiah 32, chapter 32, verses 16 through 18. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Peace, quiet. And my people shall dwell in peace in their habitation, and their resting places will be restful. Do we not look forward to a time of this? We all do. And this is God's promise for all the earth, the righteous of the earth. All good people will experience this. The wicked will be wiped away. All of Israel and all the nations of the earth. Okay? We also find this in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18. If you get a chance, pause this video, write down the verses that I'm mentioning so you can read it for yourselves. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 11 says, It shall be inhabited, for never again shall it be doomed to destruction. Jerusalem shall abide in security. Later on, the whole earth. We also find this in Jeremiah 33 verse 9. Again, worldwide peace. Another subject of the Messianic age is the universal knowledge of God, Elohim. We find this in Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23. For thus says Yehovah of hosts, In those days ten men from every nation shall grab the clothing of a Jew, grasping his garment, saying, Let us go with you, for now we have heard that God is with you. These are the nations of the earth, realizing when the Messianic Age is here and all these things are happening, they're going to realize that the Jews were always right, and they will come to us to learn, to learn the ways of Yehovah, to teach us. They're going to say, teach us. We also find in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9, And Yehovah will become king over all the earth. On that day, Yehovah will be one, and his name shall be one. His name alone. Not Yeshua, not anyone else. Only God alone, the one true God. That did not happen 2,000 years ago. Still hasn't happened. That's in the Messianic age. The knowledge of Elohim. Yehovah alone. No other God. Him alone. He will be one, and his name shall be one. As in Isaiah 43, verse 11, which states clearly that there is one Savior and one God, no other. You find this also, this worldwide knowledge of God. Isaiah 66, verse 23, It shall come to pass from new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, declares who? Yehoah. All the nations shall come to worship me alone. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. For then I will turn to the peoples to a pure language. This is Hebrew. This is why even today it's happening in our time. People from all over the earth are learning Hebrew and wanting to come closer and yearning for the teachings of the Torah. We're witnessing this. It's very evident that the Messianic age is very, very close.
We don't know how close, but we know it's close because these things are happening in our time. Isaiah 45, verse 23. I swear by myself, this is God speaking, righteousness has gone forth from my mouth, a word that will not be returned to me. And every knee and every tongue shall swear by my name. Jeremiah 33, verse 33. Again, this is what I mentioned earlier. It says here, For they shall no longer teach every man his fellow, each man his neighbor, saying, No, Yehovah, for they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Everyone will know about the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yehovah alone. And his name alone shall be vindicated for all time. You find this also in Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 23. And many, many passages. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. Psalms 86, verse 9. I can go on and on and on about the worldwide knowledge of God. Isaiah chapter 2, read the whole chapter. Isaiah chapter 11. Ezekiel 37, read the whole thing. Now, we've read just a handful of section A about what the earth will look like during the Messianic Age. There are hundreds of passages. Okay? Now we're going to look at the little circle, excuse me, little circle B. We're going to look at little circle B, and these are the passages, the real passages about the real Messiah to come. Now notice what is supposed to happen during his reign, okay? We find in Isaiah chapter 1, I'm sorry, 11, chapter 11 of Isaiah, verses 1 through 10, describes this Davidic king in this time. It says here, A staff shall emerge from the stump of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. And a shoot shall sprout from his roots. The Spirit of God will rest upon him. Now listen carefully, those who worship Jesus and Yeshua. Spirit of counsel and might. Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Elohim, of God. He will fear God. Now if that's not clear enough, look at verse 3. He will be filled with the spirit of the fear of God. God does not fear anything. So therefore the Messiah, the Messiah will not be God. He will be a Davidic king from the line of David. A humble person like King David. And he will fear God. Therefore he is not God. If you read on, it speaks about him not judging for what he says. He's not going to be doing everything he wants. For example, you see the New Testament constantly. Jesus or Yeshua is saying, you know, God gave me the authority. I have the authority. God judges no one. When we see in the Hebrew Scriptures, it says very clearly in Isaiah 33, verse 22, Yehovah is our God. Yehovah is our judge. Yehovah is our lawgiver. Yehovah is our king. He will save us. The big problem. No. In Isaiah chapter 11, it describes the Davidic king as humble, merciful, and speaking only what Yehovah demands, and commands, and nothing else. It says, in those days, the wolf will live with the sheep, and the leper will lie down with the kid. Again, peace even among the animal kingdoms. It speaks about a young child will lead all the wild animals, the dangerous animals of today. A cow and a bear will graze and lie down with their young. A lion will eat straw like the cattle. So the nursing baby, a little baby, will play at a viper's hole in the messianic age during the reign of this king of David, of David's line. This did not happen 2,000 years ago and still hasn't. Another passage, Jeremiah 23, verses 5 through 6. The days are surely coming, says Yehoah, when I will raise up for David in his line a righteous branch, and he will reign as, as king, and he will rule in righteousness. He will deal wisely and shall execute righteous in the land and justice in the land. In his days, Judah shall be safe and Israel shall dwell in security. We find the same thing, the same message in Jeremiah 33. Again, the same message of worldwide peace and security. Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 7 through 10. It says, Alas, the great day like none like it. It is a great time of distress for Jacob. Israel suffering right now. Real Israel is suffering right now. It is a time of distress for us. It says, but they will be rescued from it. On that day, says Yehovah of hosts, I will break the yoke from his neck, and I will burst his bonds, and strangers shall no longer make a servant of him. But they shall serve Yehovah their God, and David their king. This is the Messiah. I will raise up for them. 
But as for you, have no fear, my servant Jacob, says Yahuwah, and do not be dismayed, O Israel, for I am going to rescue you from far away. You find in Ezekiel chapter 34, the same message, I will, in verses 23 through 30, I will set up for them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them, and he will be a shepherd. And I, Yehovah, will be their God. See the separation between the Messiah and God. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, Yehovah, will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be a prince among them. So there's a distinguishing between God and the Messiah. You see what I'm saying? God and the servant David. I will make a covenant of peace and banish wild animals from the land. And they will make peace and sleep in the woods securely. Okay? Over and over and over again. Okay? And at the end, in verse 3, it says, Then they will know that I, Yehovah, their God, am with them. With them, the house of Israel, they are my people, says Yehovah, Yehovah Elohim. Now in Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 24 through 28, my favorite passages. My servant David shall be king over them. They shall all have one shepherd. They shall follow my ordinances and keep my decrees and fulfill them. They shall live in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, in which your ancestors lived, they and their children and their children's children shall live there forever. My servant David shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will bless them. I will multiply them. I will set my sanctuary, the temple, among them forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Then the nations shall know that I, Yehovah, do sanctify Israel when my temple is among them forevermore. These are just a handful of the passages of the, Mash of the real Mashiach to come. Now, when we saw Big Circle A, those were a, a handful of passages of hundreds of Speaking about a transformed earth, the world changes, that no one will miss when it happens. When we read about the Mashiach in the little circle B, spoke about this king of the line of David who will reign during this time. So I want to emphasize, like I do in many of my videos, the focus of Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, is not so much on the person of the Messiah. There's only about a dozen passages about the real Messiah. The focus of the Hebrew scriptures is on what the earth will look like when he is here. Now, when Yeshua was here, Jesus was here, the temple was destroyed, Israel was lost, taken all over the earth, everything was destroyed. There wasn't a gathering of Israel, it's a destruction of Israel. There wasn't a building of a temple, there was a destruction of the temple. There wasn't peace on earth. There was more war in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, than ever before. If you actually flip around these prophecies of the real Mashiach, the real Messianic age, it's actually the opposite that happened since the time of Yeshua.